Good afternoon. I'm not using this mask for entertainment. Neither am I having an objective of scaring you. This is simply an indication of what is happening in my country. The invisibility, the suffering of the LGBTQ in Uganda. And I mean... Good afternoon. I'm not using this mask for entertainment. Neither am I having an objective of scaring you. This is simply an indication of what is happening in my country. The invisibility, the suffering of the LGBTQ in Uganda. And I mean the community of lesbians, gays, bisexuals, transgender and queer in my country. Excuse me. I'm David Ubale and I come from Uganda. Actually, if I could get some few words from one of the colonial secretary called Sir Winston Churchill. In his book, he said, uh, which he titled as My Journey, My African Journey, he said, all the news has been supplied, given to the Queen of England, the UK, I mean. But I can paraphrase and give you in three, three words, concentrate on Uganda. Concentrate on Uganda. So I request you to concentrate on Uganda with my story during the few minutes I'm with you. Good afternoon. I'm not using this mask for entertainment. Neither am I having an objective of scaring you. This is simply an indication of what is happening in my country. The invisibility, the suffering of the LGBTQ in Uganda. And I mean the community of lesbians, gays, bisexuals, transgender and queer in my country. Excuse me. I'm David Ubale and I come from Uganda. Actually, if I could get some few words from one of the colonial secretary called Sir Winston Churchill. In his book, he said, uh, which he titled as My Journey, My African Journey, he said, all the news has been supplied, given to the Queen of England, the UK, I mean. But I can paraphrase and give you in three, three words, concentrate on Uganda. Concentrate on Uganda. So I request you to concentrate on Uganda with my story during the few minutes I'm with you by buying those few words from Winston Churchill. I come from a country where a majority of people believe in the power of God, the power of the Holy Spirit, and they're eagerly waiting for the return of Jesus Christ, their Savior, who promised he would be coming back very soon. It's a growing democracy. Right now we are busy in the campaigns because we shall be electing the president next year in February. It's a country with a lot of great cultures. Actually, we have, in every region, we have kingdoms and even sub kingdoms within the same country. I'm only told there are few Ugandans here, three Ugandans in the audience, so I have to paint a very small picture about my country that I love so much, like you do also in yours. In this country is where the source of the Nile is found. This river is one of the longest rivers in the world. It flows through Egypt to the Mediterranean Sea. 
it's a great country. But I have some sad news about the country I love. And this video is where we look at a stick and continue the discussion. A politician, a member of parliament, David Kato, a prominent LGBT activist, David Rubale, the one with you sharing this story. David Bahati introduced the anti-homosexuality bill in 2009 in the country and it reflected a lot of international resistance. In the long run, after two years or so, the bill was passed and in 2004 it became a law. If you are homosexual, you are graduated homosexuality act, you are convicted, you are sentenced to life. If you are found promoting homosexuality or you are supporting that group, you'll be sentenced seven years in prison. David Kato, the activist for LGBT2, was killed in 2011. I'm here to tell the story. My organization, Equality Heals, we believe that everyone matters. Most of the students who have been participating also in education because everyone needs to be educated. It's only circumstances that will really tell us otherwise. The students who have been found practicing such an act in the country have been expelled from their schools. And because of the hostility, most of them are hiding. Those who run outside the country, they have found the life more difficult than maybe they would have remained home. Maybe they could get children from within the country. In such, we're envisioning a country where everybody is fully equipped, living free from discrimination, invisibility, and violence. It sounds so quick, but the journey is a bit distant. We have planned to send back the students to school because we hope education has really a lamb line that we have to base on to shape a nation. And through education, most of them will become defenders of their own rights. It is a process, but it's adequate and worth it. Because of the law, because the law was overturned in 2014, but again the government said, no, we need to go back to the former law of 1950, which is called the Penal Code Act, 145. It incriminates homosexuality as a felony, and you'll be in prison for life. We have set up a legal intervention team, which will be working on the legal litigation more so on the legal services to people. Those who wish to have small businesses in order to sustain themselves, a smaller health project, self-help project has been set so that we can really make a society where all people fit. Members here, discrimination is not an unhandy for any country if you are talking about the, the sustainable development goals. Let us team up together. Let us give a voice for everybody. If we really believe in the United Nations Declaration of Human Rights that every person, every human being is born free, equal in dignity and rights, let's stand by so. I thank you very much.